Hi, I'm Steven, CEO of Lambda. Today, I'm going to be going over how deep learning is transforming the video game industry. The video game industry is actually larger than both movies and music combined when you look at the global total revenue. It's second only to television and television advertising, which is obviously a large market, but um, it's growing at a significantly faster rate than TV is. It's projected that with a 3% annual growth rate uh, with television and a 13% annual growth rate with video games, that video games total revenue should surpass television sometime around 2030. And video games have always been a part of computing history. So it goes all the way back to 1958, which is when Tennis for Two is created at Brookhaven National Labs. And this is a quick little demonstration of that game. You can see that um, it's created with, actually on an oscilloscope, and you can see a ball's bouncing back and forth. There's a physical game engine. And you can see that it's being played with little paddles. It's a two-player game. And, you know, this is work that was being done sort of at the very dawn of the computing age. And so gaming and computing have sort of always been tied very closely together. Deep learning and gaming are also tied together because, as you all know, the graphics cards that are used in 3D gaming are actually what kicked off the deep learning revolution in 2012 with the original ImageNet paper, which was trained on two GPUs on a workstation like the Lambda GPU workstations that we provide today. And I think it's fair to say that deep learning is the most important technology to come to gaming since 3D. Games fundamentally are comprised of a couple of different components. One is a graphics engine that will um, render on the screen what the programmer wants you to, to see. The second part, of course, is the story, and that's created by humans, written out, and uh, tells a, a story throughout the game. This is not always the case, but oftentimes is. There's artwork that, that goes into a game, so you, know, you need to create realistic backgrounds, realistic characters, realistic animations, and that's all part of the artwork that goes into it, as well as the core game logic, which involves programming rules like, for example, the ball bouncing off of the ground or the parabolic arc that the ball makes as it's affected by gravity in the, in the, the demonstration of Tennis for Two. And deep learning is able to automate a lot of the very manual labor-intensive processes that are done today in the gaming industry. So this is an example of a video where Barack Obama's mouth is actually being automatically controlled and moved by the audio stream that Jordan Peele is saying so. And you can see that it's automatically looking at the um, creating a very realistic visual representation of the speech patterns that Jordan Peele is emitting and causing the Obama if you would, video on the left to say the same things that Jordan Peele on the right is saying. And so by autom using deep learning to sort of automate animation like this, you can, you really save a lot of time in game, in game development. Another really cool application is creating realistic backdrops um, with very little underlying art artistic skill. So you can see that on the left-hand side is this sort of MS Paint-like image, which is prompting the creation of a neural network uh, generated image on the right. So you can see that the artist here is basically just putting in very basic blob patterns on the left, and the neural network is filling it in with some very realistic artwork. And so you can see that in the future, there's going to be a whole slew of automatically created video game artwork using sort of the creative insight of an artist plus the artistic capabilities of a neural network. So you can 
for example, instantly transform the season, instantly transform um, whether there's rock in a certain location or whether there's going to be grass in a certain location. Um, and you can imagine the future that this actually um, it expands beyond just two-dimensional artwork and goes to full three-dimensional artwork. Another really cool piece of technology that neural networks are bringing to gaming is the ability to add photorealism to a game. So this is just traditional GTA, but what you can do is use a neural network to transform the game engine output into a more photorealistic version of it. So this is actually a neural network that's been trained on um, a cityscapes data set that is then able to make the video game look significantly more photorealistic than the, the original. So just going uh, to compare them side by side, you can see that the left is the game and the right is the sort of more photorealistic version of it. It's, it's a subtle effect, but I think the point that stands as important is that the future of creating graphics engines is, is even changing. And you're going to start to see a lot more neural networks involved in the graphics pipeline in gaming. So there's technology like neural super samplers, which basically will allow you to render the scene in a lower resolution and then upscale it. Um, this is an example of not just upscaling, but um, actually making it look more photorealistic. Another really cool application of neural networks in gaming is actually dreaming up the actual game logic and game engine itself. So this is called GAN Theft Auto, GAN standing for Generative Adversarial Network. And you can see that this is actually uh, a game where the, the remote control, the, the remote, the, the neural network pays attention to what your controller is doing and will actually draw the scene for you based off of what controls you've input. And it's very cool because it has basically, you know, learned the, the game logic of Grand Theft Auto's driving around. So, for example, if, um, if you are to drive around and, you know, bump into a car in Grand Theft Auto, it won't let you continue left. And you can see that the, the neural network here has actually learned that when there's a car to your left, you sort of start bumping into it and pushing it to the side. Um, and this is something that wasn't explicitly programmed in, um, but was instead learned after watching hours and hours of Grand Theft Auto gameplay. Now, there's some funny little artifacts here, for example, where you'd see that the car sometimes disappears um, and, you know, there's some inconsistencies like that right there. But this is all just an example of how video games, can, you know, in the future are going to be largely co-authored by both a human programmer or artist and a neural network. So in addition to dreaming up a game engine, a neural network can even generate a story for you. So this is an example of a thing called AI Dungeon. And with AI Dungeon, you basically can put yourself into a text-based fantasy world or a text-based cyberpunk world. You basically just define what type of world you'd like to go into, and you can interact with the world through the, the large language model, which is sort of telling you a story. So for example, um, you can... If, if your character has um, an item in its, in its inventory, then you can drink the item or use the item. And the neural network will basically, based off of what it thinks should happen with the item, will sort of modify the game state and tell you what happens next. And, and this is a lot like sort of traditional Dungeons and Dragons where you have a dungeon master and they're using their creative imagination to sort of continue telling this story that you're interacting with live. And, you know, today with AI Dungeon, that's a text environment, but you can really imagine a future where it's not just a text environment, but it's a three-dimensional environment. So, you know, it, it, in addition to um, sort of automating storytelling, I think one of the really cool things that you, you can see is that you can automate actual game logic programming. So for example, this is a demonstration of OpenAI Codex where 
you use English language sentences to basically program a game. So here it's constantly checking to see if the person in the boulder overlap. And if so, then they get squashed. And so that's just an English language, you know, text string that was input and the game automatically generated the, the game, excuse me, the neural network automatically generated the game logic to accomplish that. So you're going to start to see a world where there's a democratization of the creation of video games where kids will be able to type in, hey, I want the game to do this and a neural network will help them co-design that game even if they don't know how to program. To put this all together, both sort of automating storytelling, automating um, uh, some of the game logic, this is a really cool demonstration. It's a little bit clunky and awkward at times uh, in terms of the delay with the speech recognition, but you can really start to see the future of gaming here where these characters are um, interacted with in a virtual reality environment. And you know you can basically, instead of uh, choosing from a menu of things to say to a character, you literally just say some words and the character will react realistically based off of the character's backstory, based off of what their role is. For example, in this example, this is a hot dog salesman, so he knows a thing or two about the types of hot dogs that he sells and the type of hot dogs that are in his inventory. And so I'll show you this example of putting this all together of speech recognition plus language models for both generative storytelling and automatically um, generating realistic NPC interactions. Okay, we'll talk to this hot dog man. Hey, hot dog man. What can I get you? Uh, what kind of hot dogs do you have? We have three kinds of hot dogs. The normal hot dog, the sweet hot dog, and the very spicy hot dog. The very can I get a deal? Three for one hot dog? Sorry, we can't do that. The customers would not like it. Well, I guess there's no deals from this hot dog man today, but you can really see that none of this interaction was pre-programmed. Both, um, you know, him saying what types of hot dogs he has other than what he's got in his inventory. Um, he was asked to give a discount and, and the hot dog man sort of said he wasn't going to give any discounts today. None of that was pre-programmed and you can really see that these large language models are going to be able to enable much richer interaction with NPCs in the future. And I think what this is all really building towards is that in the future, you're going to be able to live in a virtual world, whether it's a fantasy world or a cyberpunk world or a, a GTA-like world that's dreamed up by a neural network. And it will be inhabited by these really truly intelligent agents you'll be able to interact with and you know go on adventures with and that they'll help tell the story of the game and tell the story of that world. And this is all gonna be done in a relatively automated way um, uh, with game artists and game programmers working alongside neural networks. And so, you know, I think that's, that's basically the future of, of gaming powered by deep learning. It's a pretty exciting time uh, to be in the industry. And we think a lot about this at Lambda. Um, so at Lambda, you know, what we do is provide GPU compute, so workstations, servers, clusters, and a GPU cloud service for people who are doing deep learning. And um, if you're interested in learning more about how deep learning is changing gaming, or if you're a deep learning engineer and are looking to get some more compute, you can check us out on lambdalabs.com. But I really appreciate you taking the time to learn a little bit more about how deep learning is changing the gaming industry. And I look forward to hearing what you think about it. Thanks.